Today's guest is Will Bronstein. Now, Will is the founder of the podcast and resource called A Dad's Path. This is going to be a great opportunity for me as a grandfather to talk to somebody that's really working with dads to figure out how grandfathers can help support our adult sons and son-in-laws. What do they need? What kind of challenges are they facing that maybe we forgot about or don't even know about? You're going to be amazed by how passionate Will is about being a resource for fathers everywhere. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host, Greg Payne, coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be, focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Before we get into the interview with Will, I just wanted to remind you of something that's come up, which may be new to you, if you're a user of Stitcher, but I just found out that Stitcher is going away. Stitcher is owned by SiriusXM, and what they're going to do is start to really push podcasts onto their application. So if you're a member of Stitcher and you use that application to listen to this or any other podcast, Make sure that you go in and you find a new application, whether it's SiriusXM, whether it's iTunes, whether it's Google, whether it's Apple, you know, whatever it is, make sure that you're starting to move your podcast listening uh, library over to one of those other supported services. The other thing that I want to remind you is that I've partnered up with Dee Moore from More Than Grant. She has some fantastic resources for new parents and new grandparents to help make the transition and the communication over expectations a lot smoother. So be sure to check out a link for more than grand in the show notes as well as over in the affiliates. I sure would appreciate it when you connect with more than grand, you let Dee Dee know that you heard about it here on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. Without further ado, let's jump into our conversation about how grandfathers can support our sons and our son-in-laws. Hi, Will. Welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I'm excited to have you on the show and to talk to you about fathers and your podcast, A Dad's Path. So this is going to be an exciting conversation for us. Thanks a lot for having me, Greg. I'm really excited for this as well. One of the questions that I typically will ask the grandfathers. And so this is going to be cool because it may be one of the first fathers that get to respond to it. But take us back to when you found out for the first time that you were going to become a father and what was going on in in your life and how was that reaction? Sure. It's a lot of emotions. You know, uh, I almost view it as uh, stages uh, because I was just so excited. You know, Um, we were hoping to have a child come along. And uh, so when we got the news, we were, you know, overjoyed. And that lasts, you know, for a while. And then sort of reality sets in, you know, for everyone, it's different, but maybe a couple months in where you have this still excitement, but now this sort of overwhelming, like, kind of fear or not even, I don't know if fear is quite the right word, but you, it just this, there's this big thing that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, there's a big thing happening. You know, you need to prepare. And you started doing a lot of things and getting rooms ready. and uh, But there's just so many unknowns, you know. So to me, that was like the second stage. And the last stage was the still had those emotions. I was still excited. I was still uh, having some trepidation on what the future, you know, holds. But then I was also, I think, like a lot of a, a lot of women at the end of pregnancy, was ready, right? I was like ready for, okay, like, let's, let's, (laughs) let's get the show on the road. I know my, you know, that'll make my wife happy. That'll make us happy to to have the kid there. And so, yeah, it was all those emotions kind of hitting, but over time and and building until, of course, uh, we had our first. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because I know everybody has different reactions on how things like this occurred to them. One of the things that uh, happened with me with just my journey was, I met my wife 
she already had two little boys. And so there wasn't any kind of a news like, hey, you're going to become a dad. It was almost like when we decided that we were going to get married and become a family, it was like, hey, one day you're single and you could go to your buddy's house and sleep on his couch. The next day you're a, you know, you're a family of four. So right. I appreciate you know hearing your story and your version going through that. And then I hear I hear from dads a lot. Uh, the other the other part, you know, y- your your story is certainly uh, told quite a bit where you marry into that. Uh, my story where you plan it, and then you have people who un you know it's not planned, and they say, hey, uh, you know, are we going to start a family? Or are we going to just say, hey, you know, how are we going to approach this, right? Uh, and that's the third sort of door that I that I hear a lot of dads um, go through and and say, all right, this maybe wasn't my ideal situation in which case the initial emotions are different right you're not necessarily super excited right when things start but you're more uh, a lot of a lot of thinking to do a lot of uh, you know soul searching frankly uh but then you move on to those other emotions uh those you know maybe come in a different order but i I still feel like it's the same same types of emotions that, that, that hit you oh absolutely and i like how we're able to share these things and being able just to let people know like there's no one best way to to walk into this or or one way to adjust to it because it is a big shock or or change one way or another and then it all comes down to okay so how do you react to it what what do you try to embrace from it what where do you go what are the decision points so that it's great to be able for people to just share the different reactions And then also be able to kind of laugh at the ones that are laughable and then also be able to support each other when maybe they weren't so laughable. That's right. Yeah, that's that's well put. That's well put. One of the things that's going to be exciting here is getting some insight from a dad about what grandfathers can do to support the families and to support even our adult sons or son-in-laws. So that leads me into one of the first questions is, what do you think that grandfathers need to be aware of regarding some of the challenges and opportunities that fathers are facing today? That's a great question. I, and I wonder whether the challenges, you know, just the point blank challenges that grandfathers face today are going to be significantly different than the, the challenges that grandfathers faced, you know, in the previous generation or the generation before that. Because I think you know, relationships are all different and they can go in different directions. But if you look at sort of the father um, son or the the, the um, father daughter relationship, it seems like at some point, you know, the child no longer wants to listen to the adult or to the parent. Right. And they become their own person and how the parent reacts to that in terms of saying, here's my advice, you know, how they communicate uh, things such as that. I think make a big difference. And then when you have such a something like childbirth or new child coming, you know, into the world where there is a lot of advice, right? There's, uh, you know, you could ask your neighbor, you could ask someone you've never met, you ask the grocery store worker, you're going to get advice from up the wazoo. And certainly uh, one of the people you, whose advice you treasure and value is going to be your grandparent, you know, the grandparents, your, your parents or your in-laws. Uh, and that's only been true personally for me. Uh, but I would say, you know, you need to make sure that uh, you know, as grandparents, you do a good job of having that line. And I've been very fortunate uh, that my parents have done an amazing job like that. Um, and I know a lot of people who, ha- who have similar situations. I know a lot of people who have more challenging situations where their parents are much more, uh, hey, this is how I did it. This is how you should do it. You're doing it wrong, you know, and being judgmental. And, uh, you know, I-, I think as parents, we learn that can only go so far. And so hopefully as grandparents, you know, we've, you know, we, we learn doesn't go, you know, barely goes anywhere kind of thing. Um, so but yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it does. I think one of the biggest things in, like you said, was as far as what doesn't change is that communication between the two. And definitely from a father's perspective with adult children, it's giving them the room and the opportunity and being there as a resource to be reached out to, not for me to call up my son. And now I do joke with my son about this is, 
hey, let me give you five things that I saw that you need to do better. On. You know, <laughs> now, folks, that is a complete joke. But I only joke about that with my son because we have that kind of relationship. But I think there are some fathers out there that still cling on to, I need to be there to tell them what to do and how to do it. And that causes a lot of uh, strife and resentment and, and pullback where there could be an opportunity for closeness. That's right. And and frankly, it doesn't work, I would you know gather to say, right? I mean, if most of the time your kids live maybe in the same town, but not in the same house. So to be able to see them, to see your grandchildren, I mean, that is a relationship. It's a goes both ways. They need to want to see you and vice versa. So if you get in a situation where they're saying, yikes, I'm not sure if I feel like being berated today. I'm tired. I'm, I know I'm not being the best dad I could be, but gosh, you know, you're going to be less likely to, as it, to your point, make that closer connection. Oh, ab- absolutely. And and again, folks, I, I just joke around with my son because that's kind of the relationship we have. And of course, he jokes around too with kind of like, if I wanted your opinion, I'd beat it out of you, old man. You know, <laughs> you know, so that, that's I'll have a to little, write that down. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's a little bit of how the get the give and take. But the but what it does show, though, I think, is that, uh, you know, if, if you are serious, either side of that thing is that it just creates some strife where it doesn't need to be. No, I think that's right on. And, uh, you know, and as a parent, that's a challenge we have as well. Right. Like we when you see your child making a mistake, what mistakes do you want them to make? Because uh, you want them to, you know, learn from their mistakes. We don't want them to hurt themselves or anything like that from their mistakes or too badly, right? I mean, you want them to learn the right lesson. And I think that's probably a similar, uh, my guess would be that's a similar sort of idea where, you, you know, you might do things differently and you might say, gosh, you're going to learn that lesson, son, uh, but you need to learn it yourself. So for me, I always kept in the back of my mind after going through uh, business school and, and some of the experiences in work was that idea of this non-fatal error, right? So with kids and with adult kids too, as they're raising their, as they're raising my grandchildren, it's okay. If they're going to make a mistake, that's fine. Is this going to be them going, Hey, I think it's a good idea to mortgage the house because I feel lucky about the lotto numbers. That may be a whole different kind of conversation versus Hey, I think we're going to buy uh, store brand Cheerios versus uh, brand Cheerios or something along those lines. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Pick your battles. Yeah, exactly. Your battles. What do you think? Uh, maybe some of the misconceptions that, as I'm going to say, as a Gen X, that we might have towards the parents that are coming up that would be millennials and and maybe even a little bit younger about parenting because we certainly see and this is a generational thing every generation has a different way of raising and kids and doing things but what do you think some of the misconceptions that my generation might have when it comes to today's parents yeah that's a great question the societal norms in in terms of you know gender and gender roles has been shifting so i don't think that's as much of an issue as it has been in other words you know stay at home dads right the mom being the primary breadwinner uh that's happening more and more if you look at the stats but that hasn't that didn't just start you know that's been happening uh but i think that there are still some uh stereotypes in people's heads about that sometimes and you know, I, I think the other the other area that's yet to be determined is that, you know this millennial generation, which a little ahead of me or behind me, I should say, a little younger than me. I will clarify. <laughs> uh, they're they're digital first, right? They're digital native, which I was not. So their whole lives have been built around technology and cell phones. They never had a time without that, and I think they're gonna. Um, you see in the data lean on technology more in some good ways, you know, frankly, for education and probably entertainment, maybe and that might be less comfortable for, you know, grandfathers out there. If you're not as comfortable with streaming services or, you know, the role technology can play. Uh, but I think those are some of the areas to look out for. Uh, and I know areas that you address, you know, on your podcast, which is why um, I think it's so valuable, Greg, you know, it's one, one of the reasons. Oh, thank you. 
And you brought up a great point with the technology. And I was talking with another grandfather about this, is that a lot of us, whether we're Gen X or boomers or whatever, we don't understand to your point that these kids figuratively are born with smartphones in their hands. And really since the 90s, as they started to become teenagers and, and going into college, that was their way of communication, their link to the world. And so when we see things like, well, just take away smartphones and just do this and do that. And it's, it's not the same thing. And it's hard for us to put our heads around that as far as like either a way of punishing or maybe not even punishing, but like trying to get the grandkids to get out of the house and go build those connections that we all had. Right. Is yeah the idea of, you wanted to know where everybody is, look for all the bikes in the front yard. Well, that's not quite the same world anymore. So it becomes something for us to deal with. That's right. And and I think thankfully, you know, for grandparents, that's something for parents to deal with. You know, to your point, it's like, hey, you know, that's how, you know, you might want to do things and that might lead to a healthier child or who knows. But, um, it's, you know, out, out, of, out of your control. So I think that's a... Um, an advantage, you know, in a sense, if you can get that mindset as a grandparent. And the other thing I would say is, you know, if we went back 20 years or what, I don't know the exact number, but, you know, you see these kids wasting their time on computers and programming stupid things or playing like little video games. And now they're um, at Google making 600 K a year. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, uh, I, you know, that's what they, sh you know, like I wish my kids, my, my parents made me play more video games, you know, like you don't know what's necessarily going to be good either for you. And you do know technology is going to be a wave that continues just because, uh, of, of how it advances. So I, I don't think that's a bad area, you know, use it used wisely. Um, but you know, things like TikTok and, um, some of those social media sites, I certainly advise parents to um, be, be be extremely wary of just because how, how, how they built and how they target that sort of thing. But yeah. And along those lines, too, do you find that there could be or that there is a value of whether it's a grandfather or a grandmother having that objectivity that maybe a parent doesn't have when it comes to some of that technology. And again, it's not me, like, for instance, it's not me coming to you and going, Hey, Will, your kids are on devices way too much or whatever, but it's having the conversation of like, Hey, I am seeing this. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just so situation dependent and based on the relationship you have with your grand, uh, with, with your child, you know, um, yeah, just, you know, speaking from personal experience, if, if my parents ever said anything, because they really don't um, say much. So when they do say something, I listen for sure. Uh, but it depends on the person. It depends on how receptive you are on a particular topic. You know, we all think we're experts in certain things and know the right way, the only way to do things. Uh, so I think it's probably dependent. But to me, if I were um, a grandparent in that situation, I would as we said earlier, just pick my battles, you know, so in battles, a terrible word to use. I'm going to stop saying it. I would choose, you know, my one area I'm going to, that's really important to me and literally maybe one or two areas, but you, because if you abuse it, if you're saying, Oh, this is important. Oh, this is important. This is important. This ain't, then nothing's important. Right. But if you're saying, Hey, this is really, really important to me. Then I, you know, me as a son, I might not listen. I might not, uh, I might not follow it, but I'll hear you. You know, I, I will listen, I will hear you, and I might not follow it, but that that's okay. But if I'm hearing that all the time, I won't. So I think kind of picking your battles and making sure, you know, you understand your values as a grandparent and why that's important. If you can communicate that, especially to um, to me as the son, I can be more likely to make an impact. Well, and you have a good good point there, too, as far as being able to come in, say your piece, and then I said it, it's up to the parents, it's up to the dad to run with it or not run with it, but at least I've been able to express myself. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Cause I mean, I think as, as a parent, you understand, you learn to understand hopefully that a lot of parenting can be somewhat of a power struggle, right? Where the <laughs> child is trying to gain power, not just from you, but that's just part of growing up. And uh, so as, as parents, we need to learn to let go. And this is certainly a great example where, 
we only have so much power. They're not even under our roof anymore, for God's sake. Right. You know? so. <laughs> right. Now, I want to transition a little bit and talk about A Dad's Path, your podcast. And I'd love for you to take us back and talk to us about what was inspiring you to start this and what were the circumstances when you launched? Yeah, no, thank you. It's uh, been a gratifying experience having the podcast and uh, frankly, pretty therapeutic, you know, and <laughs> I I try and make sure I get something deep out of each episode and then often, uh, hopefully my audience will get something, something too. But, you know, to go way back in time, I had my first child on the way. I wasn't, there's a lot of uh, parenting information out there. There's a ton. There's a lot that's aimed at moms as well. And there's just not a lot aimed at dads. Dads, you know, obviously we're similar to moms and we have a lot of the same challenges, a lot of the same opportunities, excitement, etc. But we also have a lot of differences. And so I wanted to, you know, as, as my child, you know, once my child entered the world, it became more apparent that that wasn't really being articulated. There wasn't a good space, you know, that I found for dads and for information for dads. So that's really, <laughs> frankly, why I started putting the the site together and launched the podcast. And I just looked for people uh, who I thought would be interesting to talk to, you know, for the challenges that I have as a dad with a little kid. And it sort of ballooned from there. You know, I think we were talking about my last podcast with the director of the Happiness Project from Harvard, Robert uh, Waldinger. And that's not just for dads. It was just a super interesting conversation about how happiness levels go up and down over time and the importance of sacrifice and parenting and um, all the, you know, just going deep on a lot of different areas. But uh, that's that's where it came from and, and, and where we are today. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And that's one of the reasons I wanted us to get together, because I think our journeys and our paths were very similar, although I'm looking at it from the old guy grandpa side of things and you're looking at it from the young dad uh side of things but at the same time we're finding people that we can talk to about these uh important roles and then finding experts that we can talk to that that come in and really build up that knowledge base that dads and granddads can have so uh, this is what folks this is why that i wanted to get get will on here and will could you share with us maybe a couple of fun stories that you've heard from dads and maybe even some of the experts that you've had on the podcast. Uh, sure. Yeah. And that's a good, a great question. I mean, one thing that we always talk about is self care and the importance of making sure you stay in good shape, that you have a good diet. And we talked to a uh, nutritionist, Dr. Will Cole, um, he works with like Gwyneth Paltrow and a lot of celebrity, just a pretty well-known guy. He had a book that just came out just on how what you eat impacts how you act, you know, and that's something that makes sense. Yeah, you hear that and you understand it. But as dads, we just don't, you know, we're torn for time. We're often torn for money. We're t running around trying to live, you know, do everything at once. You remember what that was like, grand grandpa's out there. <laughs> yep. Uh, so kind of hearing the science behind that and, and actually saying, oh, there's a reason that you need good food and nutritious food was real was real interesting. Because we always start, again, we start with self-care because no matter how much like training we do as dads with courses or ebooks or whatever it is, or just my newsletter, you know, if we're tired and, you know, our levels are all off or we're dehydrated, we're not going to be good parents. We're not going to be good people. You know what I mean? Like it just, we don't have the patience. So that was interesting just hearing that science um, and then the happiness study one I found just uh, real interesting. And because happiness is such a strange sort of word, it's such a big like, what is happiness? There's long term happiness, there's short term happiness, you know, we're talking about and, and just how your short term happiness does go down right when you have your first kid, which is sort of funny to see in a chart. There's a great chart that shows your happiness level. And it's like a you it's like you meet your, your, your wife, your significant other, and then you have the child and it goes just dips down you're like oh man <laughs> but it goes back up and that's the sort of punchline it almost looks more like a j the um it, it gets higher than it started so you know i thought that was sort of an interesting um interesting one as well and i and i guess that would be my question to you greg is do you did you find that you know when you talked to other grandparents or for yourself personally that after that you know there was this, a, a period of challenges and maybe teenage years etc and then it sort of switched and went back up to that j shape Oh, I think that's absolutely true because 
one of the things I talk about is that when we're dads, we're focused in on the very tactical, right? We've we've got a career that we're working for the next advancement. We've got to worry about, it, you know, is the company, you know, in danger during a recession or not? What's going to be happening with the mortgage? Should we move here? Should we move there? What's going on with the kids? Is there developmental issues going on? You know, there's so much stuff that's coming out of dad that when you get to be a grandfather, you almost, to me, start looking at it at a strategic level. So there's some of that day-to-day stress that kind of goes away, but you start looking at the long term. You start being able to plan out like, oh, if we do this trip with the grandkids to the Grand Canyon and we can show them all these types of different things, you, you start feeding that idea of the memories, the enjoyment, the family togetherness. Some of these things that initially as a dad, I think you're looking at, can we have fun at Disneyland? Can we have fun at the Grand Canyon? But you look at it at a slightly different level and there's a different level of satisfaction. I think as a dad, if you have a successful trip to the beach and everybody had fun and people got seashells and maybe some sunburns, but we're jumping in the surf, that's a successful trip, right? From a grandparent perspective, the the happiness changes, I think, in terms of the family was together. We had a great pizza night. The cousins played together really well. We had a really great talk with our daughter-in-law and our son. And so it's a different, and I would say it does follow that J curve, definitely. And I would say grandmas are even different because as soon as they hear the news of a grandchild showing up, that thing shoots up. You know, it, it's not just a hockey stick. It's a straight line going straight yeah. up. That's awesome. That's awesome. One of the other things that I'd love to hear from your perspective and maybe some of the interviews that you've done is how you feel that grandpas can best be supporting the grandsons. And we've talked about that a little bit, but when it comes time for maybe some of the real stresses in that, you know, in a dad's life, how can grandfathers really be there? Or how can the adult dads, I don't even know how to phrase it. How can the dads be there for the dads, I guess? (laughs) (laughs) No, I like that. I like that. You know, I would say proactively listening proactively asking you know saying listening to what where their pain points if you're hearing them uh but if you're not and you just know things are stressed asking say hey how can i help what can i help with and if you don't uh you know i use the word proactive there because i would also say if you go one step deeper and just try and come up with ideas right hey can i bring dinner over tonight Hey, can I, you know, help you find a babysitter? Or hey, can I watch the kids? Whatever it is, you know, try and identify a pain point. No, oh, uh, what can I do to help? Is there anything, you know, let me know. Uh, I think that's probably the the bucket answer, and that kind of works for everyone because everyone's going to have different. We're all going to we all have different needs, and even my needs change from day to day, from week to week, as you know, as kids change. And so, but keeping that communication open, and again, that goes back to where we started on not wanting to be judgmental at all, not wanting to, you know, I'm being really careful on the battles that you pick because, you know, as grandparents, you're, you know, this, you're keeping the long view, you already said it, you're keeping the long view in mind, right? You're thinking longer term, you know, so is it a big deal if my, if they're eating way too much sugar? I don't know. Is that, you know, like that's up to you if you want to bring that up, <laughs> but you have to, you have to know each time you bring something up, it's not necessarily helpful for the relationship. And that's what you should be keeping in mind the longer term you know, goals that you have there with, with being grandpa. That's great advice. And along those lines too, when it's a situation of a, of a father-in-law getting a better relationship with a son-in-law, because there is a little difference, right? It's, it's the, the, the dad has the daughter, but now there's the son-in-law. Have you come across any examples about how that relationship can just be built maybe a little bit easier because I imagine there's a lot of uh, starts and stops and not sure about this and not sure about that kind of thing when it comes to a, a, a dad and a, and a father-in-law. Yeah, that's a great question. 
and always a challenge. I've been fortunate with my father-in-law, if he's listening. Um, <laughs> he really, he really is a uh, been a great father-in-law. But I, you know, I think part of it is being more both, you know, more sensitive on both sides. So, as a father-in-law, being even less likely to to say something because you know. If, uh, if you if you really need to say something, it's probably more appropriate to say it to your daughter or to you know to your relation, uh, though it's d- of course dependent. Uh, but then, as a uh, son-in-law, you know, I would say your daughter-in-law. It's really be more, be a little bit more giving, maybe, or more sensitive to what they're asking. So you know, gosh, that would really annoy me if my parents asked. But that just only. Only let it kind of annoy me because it's my father-in-law, right? Like, you know, so it still might be not ideal, but uh, you know, you need to both tread carefully because, yeah, you're building a new relationship, and uh, that, you know, again, that's the that's the the long-term goal. That's great advice too, because it's it's so interesting that when a, a son or daughter brings somebody home, and it's like, hey, this is the person, and now we're engaged, and you may know that person real well, or you may be across the country and it's like, I know of this person and now you're starting to build that relationship. And so, uh, yeah, I think being, having that communication and like you said, also maybe not assuming that there's, uh, you know, anything behind communication other than just somebody's just trying to build a relationship with you and it may be a little clunky. That's right. That's right. Will, is there anything else about a dad's path that you would love to share that maybe I haven't talked about or we haven't brought up? No, I, I mean, I appreciate you having me on. You know, I, I uh, you know, my audience isn't listening right now. My audience is your audience's sons. So, you know, grandfathers, tell your kids. <laughs> uh, you can go to our website and we have a free newsletter to dadspath.com. We have all sorts of ebooks and audiobooks, courses, um, just resources to help help dads. You know, our, our, our motto or saying whatever is make fatherhood count. And that's really what we're trying to do. You know, we know there's a finite amount of time where we're really, you know, helping mold our, our kids. I know you always you know, have a little bit of that going on, but really a small amount of time in our lives when they're home and they want to be with us and we want to be with them. So we're trying to make the most of it. That's, uh, that's the goal here. Well, and that, that's great. And I, I love it because I think we're both uh, from from a dad's perspective and a grandfather's perspective, that sometimes when you hear parenting or you hear grandparenting, it's almost like, well, it's about 90% grandmas or moms and it's about 10% dads or granddads. And I love having a place where dads can go to get some great information, get some entertainment with the podcast and, and information with that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, you know, and appreciate what you're doing. That's what we always say with, um, you know, with gen- well, what we're just saying about gender barriers changing and gender roles. And yeah, you know, traditionally the grandma was much more maybe in the picture, much more driving things, but that's not how it will be in the future. It's not how it has to be. You know, grandpa's out there, make plans, set up plans, you know, be the leader on these kind of things. And, you know, that's the, that's the society we live in now. So take advantage of it. It's a good thing. Absolutely. And folks, we'll put a link to a dad's path into the show notes in case you're out running around or on a walk or whatever. Uh, so it's easy to find and we'll be sure to uh, get all that really easy for folks. So Will, thank you so much for being on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I sure have enjoyed this conversation with you. Greg, thanks a lot for having me. Best of luck with everything and uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Absolutely. I really did appreciate Will's input and his opinions about what fathers need. It was great getting in and being able to pick his mind about how we as grandfathers, and I know we got some grandmas listening to this as well, how we can all support our sons and our son-in-laws, how we can really be a useful resource to them so that we're building them up that we're there to be that sage to help them out through many of life's trials and decision points. It's not easy sometimes figuring out if you're taking this job or that job, if you want to put your children into private school or public school, or 
all these different things that maybe we've forgotten about because being an active parent to little kids is, for some of us, pretty far back down the road from where we are today. So I really appreciate Will's time and being on this podcast. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be on Will's podcast too. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Go over to adadspath.com and sign up for his newsletter and for his podcast. And until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www cool-grandpa.us look for the comments tab fill it up hit submit it's as easy as that until next time remember to stay cool